Thank you for joining us today, and I'm delighted to be joined by Director Tommy Wells and Council Member Mary Chafe from Ward 3, uh, who also chairs the Council's Committee on Transportation uh, in the Environment. Uh, today, we're taking a very important step forward in making our city safer, stronger, and greener. We can't wait another day, we all know, uh, to mitigate the effects of climate change. And that's Solar for All is part of helping DC reach its goal to reduce the amount of energy that comes from fossil fuels. The primary feature of this legislation was this idea about equity, equal access to all folks in the district, no matter what their income is. We wanna use that money to make solar available to 100,000 people in the District of Columbia. That's never really been done before, anywhere. In DC, we're acutely aware of the fact that we're becoming an unaffordable city but we have a history of a city that um, has been an inclusive city. So as we developed our policy landscape and began to create more programs, we wanted to be able to kind of bridge that gap between the early adopters and the average citizens that were interested in solar perhaps, but may not have been able to afford it. The program really is centered around the goal of providing the benefits of solar energy to 100,000 low-income district households in roughly an amount that would reduce their utility costs by at least half. So we had to look at how do we do this? We are restricted in where we can install solar. The solar has to be installed within the boundaries and borders of the district. And there's high competition for roof space. So we've asked these innovators, entrepreneurs, developers of solar, come up with different ways of how do you transfer the value of solar power to lower income residents and figure out how we meet the goal of serving households in DC with their energy burdens. With this aggressive goal, we needed to solve certain barriers in a replicable and scalable way. So we call this round the innovation and expansion phase, wherein we listed specific barriers that needed to be solved. We have a lot of people in multifamily buildings that are in affordable housing. And there's only one meter for the whole building. We didn't believe we had an actual 100,000 homes in the district that actually had electricity bills. So the innovation phase allowed us to take an additional look at providing the benefits of solar through amenities, building upgrades, or other qualitative benefits such as direct cash payments. Any questions? The government has the ability to do the research and development. We have a duty to, to figure this out. There's enough funding to do it. It's just a matter of overcoming all the sort of barriers to implementation. And so we're going to learn from that. We're going to see what's the most efficient use of the money to serve the greatest number of folks. And these inventors are going to show us how to do it. And they're also going to show us what doesn't work. There are nine different grantees that are out uh, trying to solve these different challenges that are exist in the market because we're going to need all hands on deck. We're pursuing our renewable energy goals. We are training people for jobs, good jobs, and at the same time, we're providing equity across the District of Columbia so that everybody, no matter what your income level, will have access to the benefits of solar energy. Climate change is real. Scientists said that we have until 2030 to avoid catastrophe. Local jurisdictions like Washington, D.C., reinventing what energy and energy distribution to meet the needs of our residents is and can be is, is new. We share information with New York City. We exchange information with LA. We're all learning from each other at the same time. And we have to deploy that learning as fast as we can with each other in order to make a difference.